Dear students, today we will take up a topic of current relevance and importance and discuss the historical background of it so that you will be able to understand the quite recent developments that have been going on in the Middle East. The topic is none other than the origin of Israel-Palestine conflict. Most of you know the recent attacks by Hamas on the Israeli territories and the retaliation of Israel on Gaza Strip. If you want to understand that perspective as to why these developments are happening, we need to discuss this issue in detail, particularly the origin part of it. And most of you should be familiar with all these personalities, right from Karl Marx to Mark Zuckerberg. What is the common thread that connects them? They are either Jews or people of Jewish origin. So the first question that we need to answer is this. Who are the Jews? If you want, want to understand the origin of the Jews, you need to know about a biblical personality called as Abraham. Somewhere around 2000 years before the times of Jesus Christ, there was a person living in Middle East and his name was Abraham. Abraham supposedly had a covenant or an agreement with God according to which the God that Abraham calls us Yahweh asks Abraham to worship him, worship him diligently in return for which Abraham and his descendants are promised a very prosperous life and a piece of land in the Middle East. So Abraham is considered to be the first Jew by the Jews. But Abraham's importance does not end there. Abraham is considered to be one of the most important personalities or rather the most important personality in three different religions across the world because he is considered to be the patriarch of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Patriarch means forefather or the originator of the religion. So what was Abraham's story? Abraham had two sons. The first son was Ismael and the second son was Isaac. The descendants of Abraham through Isaac and his son Jacob, they came to be known as Israelites because Jacob has another name called Israel. Israel means the person who struggled with the God. So if you look at the origin of Judaism, it comes from Abraham via Isaac, Jacob and religion emerges later. On the other side, the descendants of Ismail, they came to be known as the Arabs. And you know, the religion of Islam originated in the deserts of Arabia because of a prophet called Muhammad. And it was an offshoot of Judaism, which originated from Israelites, that resulted in the birth of another prominent religion in the world, which we know as Christianity today. That is why I told you, Abraham is the common figure in the three important religions of the world, which are called as Abrahamic religions. The Abrahamic religions, as I told you, I am insisting again, are Judaism, which the Jews follow, Christianity, followed by different sects of Christians across the world, and last but not the least, Islam. In addition to these three religions, there are other Abrahamic religions as well, but we will only focus on these three religions to understand the basis of Israel-Palestine conflict. Let me give you some basic details regarding the three religions. If you look at the table on the board, you can understand that of the three religions, Judaism is the oldest religion and the latest religion is Islam. On the other hand, numerically speaking, Christianity today is the most dominant religion among the three. In fact, it is the most dominant religion of the world followed by Islam. So it is practiced in most of the countries across the world. Whereas the oldest among the three religions, that is Judaism, is practiced by a very small number of people and is the most prominent religion in Israel. If you look at the religious beliefs pertaining to the three religions, all are monotheistic religions. 
for example, the Jews believe in a God called Yahweh, whereas the Christians believe in a concept called the Trinity. So, God manifests himself in three forms, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, essentially monotheistic belief. On the other hand, the Muslims believe in one God called Allah. So, all the three religions are monotheistic in nature and they were propagated by different prophets or messiahs of God at different points of time. For example, you have Moses in Judaism, Jesus in Christianity and Muhammad in Islam. Likewise, the three religions have different religious scriptures and Judaism may the work of Moses resulted in Torah, which forms a part of the Hebrew Bible, a compilation of 24 different books. The Hebrew Bible forms the basis for the Old Testaments, Old Testament that the Christians follow. But Christians today focus mainly on the New Testament, which is a collection of 27 different books. On the other hand, the Muslims follow only one holy scripture, that is Quran. So, depending on the areas in which the religions developed, they also came to be dominated by different languages. Judaism dominated by Hebrew, Christianity dominated by languages like Latin and Greek. On the other hand, Islam by Arabic, Hebrew and Greek. Now, let us look at the conditions that related, that are related to the establishment of Jewism as a famous religious sect. As I mentioned earlier, Hebrew Bible or the Tanakh is the holiest book for the Jews and from this book, we come to know about various developments pertaining to the Jews. One such important development is the God promised land to the Jews. They call it their homeland, which was promised by Yahweh to Abraham and his descendants. It is somewhere corresponding to the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula today. It forms a crescent shape. So, if you look closely, Israel is located here. This is Israel. Originally, Abraham who was from the eastern part of this crescent close to Babylon gradually migrated along with his descendants and reached a place called Canaan, which is close to modern day Israel. They had settled there and they became a prosperous community, but there occurred a famine in Canaan, which forced the Jews to migrate to Egypt, which was then ruled by the Pharaohs. And we come across an important pharaoh called Seti, who roughly lived around 14th century BCE. The Seti had a son called Ramses and he also had an adopt, adopted son called Moses. So, this would be Ramses and this is Moses. Moses was adopted by Seti, the pharaoh and his wife. Later, the pharaoh came to know that this Moses was from the Jewish group, which was living as an enslaved population in Egypt. So, fearing that his life was at risk, Moses escaped from Egypt and roamed across different places. But eventually, Moses had a revelation and returned to Egypt to free his people. By then, Ramesses had become the king. Subsequently, after a few miracles, Moses managed to free his tribe from the control of Ramesses and they started the journey towards Israel. But towards their way to Israel, Ramesses pursued Moses and the other Jews 
and this resulted in another miracle by Joseph, Moses. As the various religious scriptures say, Moses split the Red Sea to move his tribe across the territory and the event also resulted in the death of the Egyptian soldiers who pursued them. Later, Moses prayed to God in a place called Sinai, which is a mountain and here God handed him over the Ten Commandments, which forms the basis of Jewism. Eventually, the Jews led by Moses had settled in the modern day Israel and the territories around that. And they had established two kingdoms. One, the kingdom of Israel. Two, the kingdom of Judah or Judah. Judah or Judea. Both should be fine. So, somewhere around 13th century BC, the Jews had settled into two kingdoms around modern day Israel, kingdom of Israel and kingdom of Judah, where they had become prominent, prosperous and even a few Jewish kings had come into picture. One such king was King Solomon around 10th century BC. And the Solomon built the first Jewish temple, which is called as the first temple by the Jews around 957 BCE in Jerusalem which is in Judah. So, while these developments were happening around Israel, politics had gotten busy in the other parts of the Middle East, particularly in Mesopotamia. And a new dynasty had come to rule Mesopotamia that is called as the Assyrian dynasty. These Assyrians were trying to expand their territory and in their quest for expansion, they destroyed the kingdom of Israel. The kingdom of Judah survived because the people chose to fight against the Assyrians. And later, the Assyrians were replaced by another dynasty called Babylonians. These Babylonians had not only replaced the Assyrians, uh, they had also managed to destroy the first temple built by the Jews around 587 BC. So, the first Jewish temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 6th century BCE and the Jews were enslaved by the Babylonians. They were forced to move to Babylon. So, the Jews had been forced to move to Babylon. Within a few years, the Babylonians were replaced by a new set of rulers called the Persians belonging to the Achaemenid dynasty and the Persians were relatively cordial towards the Jews. So, they allowed the Jews to move back to their homeland around 538 BC. The Jews were grateful and they eventually moved back to Israel where they constructed the second temple around 516 BC. So, these two temples are the holiest of holy places for the Jews all over the world. So, first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians and over the ruins of the first temple, the second temple had been constructed by the Jews around 516 BC. The Jews continued living there. In the meantime, there was a great military conqueror called Alexander who had been spreading the wings of the Roman Empire across the world. Due to the spread of the Roman Empire under Alexander, the kingdom of Judah came under Roman control around 4th century BC. And for your information, the Romans were believers of polytheism. They worshipped a multitude of gods and their religi religious beliefs did not go well with that of the Jews. So, Romans ended up destroying the second Jewish temple around 70 CE, 70 years after the time of Christ. Meaning, 
in this transitionary phase we had an important personality in all of history he was jesus christ this jesus christ was originally a jew meaning christianity which started due to the efforts of jesus christ was one of the offshoots of judaism so jesus had been crucified and christianity was born in the meantime while the romans had managed to destroy the second temple and later due to the coming of jesus christ his teachings and his crucifixion christianity had started spreading particularly across different territories around jerusalem and later the rest of europe and the place where jesus was buried temporarily in jerusalem became a holy site for the christians where the christians built the church of holy sepulcher around 326 c 326 years after the times of jesus christ so earlier there were temples related to judaism now there was another chapel or church related to christianity in the same territory jerusalem the increasing roman influence and the spread of christianity resulted in the birth of two roman empires namely the western roman empire and the eastern roman empire in western roman empire catholic christianity or catholicism was promoted whereas in eastern roman empire a different form of christianity called orthodox christianity was promoted now the jews had been living in the territories which were under the control of eastern roman empire and the eastern roman rulers as well as people being christians because christianity had become dominant there by 4th century ce the christians in the eastern roman empire started persecuting the jews once the persecution in the eastern roman empire started the jews had fled to different parts of the roman empire different part of the Ro roman empire in europe northern africa and even some territories in the middle east so jews were persecuted by the romans in the meantime the western roman empire came under the attack of barbaric tribes from germany and the western roman empire had fallen to this german barbarians around 5th century ce and these german barbarians also started persecuting the jews so jews were persecuted in eastern roman empire as well as in western europe by the german barbarians who had replaced the western roman empire and this continuous persecution made the jews reach different parts of the world but while the jewish diaspora was spreading to different parts of the world another prominent religion had been established by the descendants of ismail that religion was none other than islam islam was born in the deserts of arabia it was propagated by prophet muhammad around 7th century ce and islam as i told you earlier was a monotheistic religion so the monotheistic nature of islam and jewism made the muslims tolerate the jews better so muslims started muslims started thriving in the middle east and they had started supporting the jews as well because of their monotheistic beliefs so the muslims were growing and with their support the jews were also prospering in the meantime the muslims they started constructing their holy places 
and holy temples in the territories around Jerusalem. Two such holy places should be the Dome of the Rock. You would have heard about this place quite recently in the news. And Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is considered to be the third holiest site for the Muslims across the world. So by now, you would have understood that Jerusalem was a city which was home to many religions. Initially, we had the first temple and later the second temple and then the church of Holy Sepulchre. Now we had the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. So due to continuous destruction, construction, reconstruction, the city of Jerusalem became home to all the three Abrahamic religions at this point of time, Jewism, Christianity and Islam. Now, if you look at the earlier picture closely, so you have Dome of the Rock, you have the Church of Holy Sepulchre and you have the Western Wall. which is the only remaining monument of the first two Jewish temples. Now the real problem with the city of Jerusalem is as to who should control all these holy places. The Jews are the Muslims. That is the origin, real origin of the conflict. That is why we often find the city of Jerusalem in the middle of religious conflicts and Israel-Palestine conflicts. So Jerusalem being home to three religions and the Jews getting the support of Arabs thriving due to trading connections with them also made the Jews the middlemen in the trade between the Arabs in the east and the Christians in the west. So Jews had started prospering due to trading contacts with the Arabs and the Christians and gradually the increasing trading contacts made the Christians, particularly the Catholics of Western Europe, tolerate the Jews better. So they were existing cordially, almost harmoniously for another, another 100 years. By then the Crusades had started. Crusades were holy wars between Christendom that is the Christian world and the Muslims because by now Muslims had conquered all the holy places associated with Christianity which angered the Christians, Christian rulers and the Pope alike. So they initiated war against the Muslims. But in this war, the Christians also happened to persecute the Jews who had close ties with the Muslims. So Jews were persecuted yet again by the Christians during the Crusades. The Crusades happened between 1095 CE to 1291 CE. And throughout this period, the Christians had been persecuting the Jews and this forced the Jews to move to different parts of the world again. But what were the causes for the Christians persecuting the Jews? The Christians accused that it was a Jewish court which convicted Jesus leading to his crucifixion. They also accused the Jews of spreading plague to support the Muslims in order to weaken Christianity. So, those causes being outright accusations and the Jewish persecution ultimately forced them to move to Muslim controlled territories because by then a great Muslim empire had come into being around Turkey. It was called as the Ottoman Empire. So, the Jews were forced to emigrate to Ottoman Empire because historically the Muslims had been tolerating the Jews better and they had found asylum in the Ottoman Empire where they were welcome. Some of the Jews even moved to Northern Europe, particularly around modern day Baltic states. 
around Lithuania and Poland. So this were this was a Jewish community in the Ottoman Empire that is Turkey and another set of Jews they had moved to Poland and Lithuania. But the problems between the countries of Poland, Lithuania and the surrounding empires pertaining to Austria, Russia and Sweden resulted in a major conflict between these nations around mid 18th century. Now Jews had become the Balika Bakras or the victims in these wars as well. More than a lakh Jews had been killed in this conflict and so they were forced to move from Poland, Lithuania into Russia. Russians also dis disliked the Jews and they had also been persecuting the Jews. So if you look at Jewish history, historically they had been persecuted for their religious beliefs as well as because of political developments right from the days of Assyrians, Babylonians etc. And hence they did not have a homeland of their own. They had been moving here and there in search of a homeland. But the homeland they always wanted was in the Middle East, that was Israel. But because of these conflicts, they were once again forced to move across continents, across the Atlantic to countries like USA. Some of the Jews even settled in Western Europe. So Jewish diaspora gradually developed across different places in the world and the Jewish diaspora wanted that homeland more than ever. And there emerged a Jewish personality called Theodor Herzl around the 1890s and he started a movement called Zionist movement. Zion was the other name for Israel. Under Zionist movement, Theodor Herzl and his supporters, they wanted to establish a Zionist state which, which was essentially a Jewish state in the then territory of Palestine. I told you historically the Ottomans had been tolerating the Jews better but now the Jews had been wanting a Jewish state in the territory of Palestine which was then under Ottomans. So the political aspirations of the Jews did not go well with the Ottomans. So the Ottomans were against the Zionist movement. So while these developments were going on, the first world war had started in 1914 and the Jews wanted to use the situation of the first world war to establish their homeland in Israel. That is why the Jews participated in the world war from the perspective of different countries. They had become soldiers in the armies of both allied nations and central powers. They were desperate to create their Israel. So they were trying all the methods available to them to achieve their goal. But at the end of the world war by 1918 as all of you know the central powers had been defeated. The allied powers were victorious and clearly the Israelites or the Jews had been historically siding with Britain more because there was a British bureaucrat who had promised them a homeland in Palestine. So once the Ottomans were defeated in the first world war because Ottomans were a part of the central powers, they were forced to sign the Treaty of Severus. Treaty of Severus resulted in the destruction of Ottoman Empire and many territories were distributed among the allied nations. Particularly Britain got Palestine and the Transjordanian territories as British mandates. Palestine and the Transjordanian territories as British mandates. So if you look closely, so Palestine had become a British mandate. On the other side you have the Jordanian territories. Now the Jews were pretty confident that they would be able to establish their homeland in Palestine because like I told you that British bureaucrat, his name was Balfour. Balfour had declared in 1917 during the course of the First World War 
that Jews would be given a homeland in Palestine. And believing in the Balfour Declaration of 1917, thousands of Jews started immigrating into Palestine. This happened over a course of roughly 30 years from uh, towards the end of First World War till the late 1940s. And as the Jewish population increased in the Palestinian territories, which was historically dominated by the Muslim Arabs, conflict started between Palest Palestine Arabs and the Jews who wanted to settle there. Now, Britain wanted to avoid unnecessary conflicts regarding Palestine. So, Britain tried to regulate the inflow of Jews into the Palestinian territories. This angered the Jews. So, the Jews created a militia called Haganah to fight against both the British and the Palestinian Arabs. So, such conflicts, conflicts between British Jews and Palestinians or Arabs had started and they had been happening quite frequently in the Palestinian territories. In the middle of all such chaos, the Jewish population in Palestine had increased to 33 percentage from the original 6 percentage in the early 20th century. One of the most prominent riots in the Palestinian territories happened in 1929 which resulted in Hebron massacre in which roughly about a hundred Jews were killed. That is the real origin of Israel-Palestine conflict in modern times. So, the Jews were being persecuted by the Palestinian Arabs now and, pa and the Jews were not ready to tolerate this. They started fighting with the help of Haganah but there was no solution which was immediately possible. When this fighting was going on between the Arabs and the Jews regarding Palestine, Germany which had been defeated in the first world war by the allied powers was forced to sign the treaty of Versailles according to which the nation was humiliated. As a result, the then German government which was called as Weimar Republic had lost popularity and the Nazis had started becoming popular because Nazis propagated an idea in Germany, Nazis under Hitler propagated an idea in Germany called stab in the back myth. The people who believed in this myth thought that the German military did not lose the first world war in the battlefield but rather it was the Jews, the communists and the democratic politicians who betrayed their nations because of which the stab in the back myth promoted anti-Semitic or anti-Jewish sentiments. In Germany, the term Semitic is related to languages. It is related to Arabic and the Jewish languages. So, Jews being one of uh, the people who follow Semitic languages, that is Hebrew, anti-Jewish sentiments were encouraged in Germany. As a result of this sentiments, Hitler's party, the Nazi party could capture power around 1933. Subsequently, Hitler became one of the factors in the Second World War and during the course of the Second World War from 1941 to 45, Hitler and his Nazi party persecuted the Jews. They did not just persecuted the Jews. They killed about 6 million Jews in their concentration camps which we know as Holocaust. This was one of the darkest episodes in the history of Jews across the world. So, due to Holocaust, the world's sympathy was with the Jews and they were allowed to move into the modern day Palestinian territories. As the influx of the Jews into Palestine increased, the conflicts between the Palestinian Arabs and the Jews also increased. By then, Britain was unable to handle the situation. So, Britain transferred the Palestine issue to the United Nations which had been established in 1945. And finally, the United Nations gave a solution in 1947 through the resolution number 181 subclass 2. And according to this resolution, United Nations established 
two states in Palestine. One was an Arabic state was the pal for the Palestinian Arabs. The other one was a Jewish state for the Jews who had settled in Palestine. But given the nature of Jerusalem, that being home to three different religions and their holy shrines, Jerusalem was made an international territory. Finally, the Jews accepted this plan and established the state of Israel on 14th May 1948. The establishment of the Jewish state was a great cause for the celebration of the Jews. But on the other hand, the Palestinian Arabs felt offended because they were the majority population in Palestine, but their territories had been greatly reduced. And this resulted in the future conflicts regarding Palestine, which will be discussed in a separate video. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'd like to have your comments. Thank you.